Hi there and welcome. I'm Jennifer and this channel is A Country Life. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. I'm so glad to have you here. If you have been around here for a while, thanks for always coming back. I appreciate you guys so much. And today I have about 45 minutes, maybe I could push it to 50 minutes um, of time here in the kitchen. And um, I did share in my last big grocery haul video, I shared a, just a real snippet of kind of my, um, I don't even wanna call it weight loss journey, but just, I guess that's the best way to put it. And I shared just a real quick snippet of kind of how that went over um, the course of like the last three. Actually, we're like coming up here this May, it's gonna be five years, but Anyway, I am getting back into uh, working very hard at eating low carb again because I find that for my body, it works the best to keep me at a healthy weight, um, keep my joints from hurting, keeps my brain from fogging up and all those things. So I'm not going to call it keto because it isn't necessarily the absolute true, true keto, but it is... Um, I do feel the best when I eat very low carb. So what I'm gonna do in this 45 to 50 minutes is to get some stuff prepped because if you are looking to lose a few pounds, which I know pretty much everybody feels like they have a few pounds to lose, um, the key, in my opinion, is to have a plan and then from there, once you have the plan, you actually have to take some steps, right? And the very first step I find is to make sure that you have food prepped. So that's what we're gonna do here today. It doesn't have to take tons and tons of time. It doesn't have to be really fancy, but just get some stuff prepped. Okay, yes, I was just looking. I do have other kitchen things that need to be done. I have a dishwasher that needs to be unloaded. It looks like there's some dishes over there that need to be done, but we're gonna skip all of that for now. We're gonna get to uh, prepping the vegetables and other things. So I was just gonna move this nut bowl and these are the nuts that we had from Christmas. It was a pretty good heaping bowl, but anyway, oh, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, but this is another great thing. Just have some nuts on the counter if, because the act of cracking nuts is time consuming, but um, you know, it gives you something to do with your hands and nuts are a nice uh, low carb option uh, with you know good omegas, omegas and all those things in it. Okay. So these are the two things that I'm gonna to add to my Ziploc bag with the cauliflower in it, just some olive oil, and this is from Dollar Tree, garlic and pepper. It's like a, just a salt mixture. I'm gonna keep this in the refrigerator, and I will either make it tonight or tomorrow or Sunday for supper. So I'm just adding quite a bit of olive oil in there. I'm gonna put a good amount of the garlic salt in there. So I like to make plenty so that I can have leftovers the next day for lunch because this heat reheats really, really well. And also, um, if I'm really, really in need of something, I love this so much that I can actually just eat it as like a bedtime snack. <laughs> Now, this cauliflower here, I have some plans to make a mock macaroni and cheese. That is not working real well, is it? I thought it would break this up into smaller chunks, but it looks like it's good. Cool. 
So this actually didn't chop it up the way I wanted it to. I wanted it to just kind of chop it into small, like half inch little pieces, but it's actually kind of like ricing it which is not exactly what I was looking for so I actually am just gonna run my knife through my cauliflower really quick here oh yeah this actually works great that's exactly what I wanted Okay, so I know that there would have been an easier way to do the, the cauliflower here if I would have just gotten out my larger chef knife, but I didn't do that. <laughs> so this is going to be good enough. I needed about six cups for the mock macaroni and cheese. This is a seven and a half cup bowl, so I think I have plenty. For the cucumber, I'm just going to slice one English cucumber into a container. We can eat this fresh. I have some dill dip. Um, the key with different dips is just to make sure that there isn't a lot of added sugar in it. You can make your own dips to eliminate that as well. singing if you want. What? Oh, I see. We're going to come back over here and chop up broccoli. This is going to be for my broccoli salad. I'm not going to be real particular. I'm not taking this as, um, you know, a dish to pass anywhere. This is just going to be at home, so I am just going to chop this all up into very small little bits. Some of the stem I'm going to use as well, just because it is very good for you still. It gives a really, really good crunch. And this broccoli here is going to be for a broccoli salad that I put cranberries into, sunflower seeds, sharp cheddar cheese, bacon, and onion. I think those are all like the, kind of just all the ingredients. And then I make a dressing with some mayo and uh, usually some sugar. I've been decreasing the amount of sugar gradually over the years for this salad. So I'm going to actually try to leave it out completely. Uh, I do have some stevia. I'm not a big uh, sweetener kind of person. Like, I just don't use those sweeteners. I, I buy them thinking, oh, I should make some different, like, desserts and whatever, but I just, I just don't. But I might give that a try this time with this salad. We'll have to see. Now, as long as I make my salad within three or four days, this broccoli is going to stay fresh. And I'm just kind of piling everything up over here. I have all of my uh, vegetables all ready to go. These are some things that I didn't cut up uh, quite yet. Let's work on the cabbage next. So the cabbage here that I just prepped is actually going to be for fried cabbage. It is nothing I've tried before, but I love cabbage, so I'm assuming I'm going to like it. Uh, you'd use cabbage, and then I believe there's going to be onion in it, and then you uh, fry up some bacon. So you start with frying bacon, then you remove the bacon so that you know it doesn't get too overdone, 
and chop up the bacon and then in that remaining bacon grease I think you might drain off some of it depending you know it's just it kind of depends on how much bacon grease is there then you fry up the cabbage and some salt some pepper and some onion and then you add the bacon back in at the end maybe even a little garlic I can't remember but anyway that's what I'm going to be doing with uh, with whatever this is cabbage so before I clean up, the last thing I'm going to do is just cut up this onion right here. I'm going to clean up all of my uh, vegetable scrap mess here. I have been collecting vegetable scraps again for making some vegetable broth or uh, vegetable stock here. Um, and so I'm just going to get all this cleaned up, get everything put away. And so that is the first step in getting back on track to eating low carb. So we are back now and I'm back into the kitchen here. So you saw there just before I got all of the vegetables prepped and I would say that that is probably the number one key to losing weight if that is your goal with a change in your diet. Whether you're going to do an Atkins or a Paleo or a Whole Foods or a keto or a low carb or a carnivore or what are all of the different diets or cabbage soup or the all grapefruit diet or I just saw something run through my my um, YouTube feed the other day it was like the couple who ate potatoes like every day for a year or something like that okay so whatever it is you're gonna do the key is going to be prep and just being prepared I mean I think it's like that with everything if you decide that you want to start running and you don't have running shoes you're not going to get real far, are you? So definitely, definitely prep work. I don't know why the lighting seems so yellow in here today, but I think because it's just getting dark out. It is about four o'clock and you know, that's what happens. Now what I'm going to start working on is like protein. So I'm going to hard boil up a dozen eggs and those will be used for cob salads. I will use those as just, um, just a snack. Uh, the rest of the family will eat those as well probably, but just to have a dozen hard boiled eggs would be a nice thing. They're puffy stickers? Uh -huh. Cool. <laughs> okay, I don't know if this is YouTube appropriate or not. What are you doing? Arr! Arr! use XX. Arr! Arr! Go put that away. Arr! <laughs> That's too much. All right. Um, you never know what Joe's going to be bringing our way. Uh, the other thing that, that I'm going to do is get some meatballs going. So I'm just going to look up a recipe. I don't even have one offhand. I'm going to look up a quick recipe on using um, the pork rinds as a binder. And I'm going to make some meatballs. And then the other thing that I'm going to do here tonight is just get some fish prepped for supper tonight. Okay, so I did just find a recipe that uses pork rinds, and um, yeah, so it looks super, super easy. It's from a website called Today's Today's Special, food for the, and then dot, dot, dot. I don't know, I can't read all of it. But anyway, this recipe is called, um, actually it just says pork rinds are the new breadcrumbs. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just get all of this put together, and yeah, this should be fun. So tonight what we're going to be doing is just having the, some fish sticks here. And then I did get some tilapia. The tilapia I'm going to thaw. And I think I'm going to have tilapia and Warren will have tilapia. Um, let's see, Amber and Sam are not going to be here. I think the little kids are all going to just probably have the fish sticks. So I have to decide. I think what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to get a few, like four pieces of tilapia thawing. And then I like to soak it in a little bit of salt water. It just seems to... Uh, every once in a while we'll get a piece of tilapia just had that just has kind of a strong fishy flavor that like not the good fish flavor but kind of a bad fishy flavor and so what I'm going to do is just soak this in a little bit of salt water and then I will um, I'm just going to pan fry those I'm just going to put some seasoning on pan fry them we usually just call that butter fish because I melt some butter and just quick pan fry it up until both sides are nice and kind of crispy golden brown I'm also going to make that um, 
bacon fried cabbage, so I'm gonna get that going as well. <laughs> Okay, the meatballs are out and they are registering all the way up to 180 degrees. Ground beef only needs to register, or this is, happens to be ground venison, really only has to register to 160. So uh, the recipe did say that these should be in for like 45 minutes and I only had them in for 30 and uh, that seems to be plenty of time. So I think that that's one of the nicest things about just kind of prepping ahead. You know, like I always say, since I'm in the kitchen, I might as well do kitchen things. So I just thought um, it's just kind of nice to be in here and getting a lot of things done at once. The hard boiled eggs are going into the fridge now. So those will be able to come out within the next few days for making cob salads and just for snacking on. I have eight slices of bacon here. This is a brand new recipe. I can't really imagine it going wrong just because I do love bacon. I love cabbage. I love onion, salt, pepper, and garlic. So really, that's all it is. But it just makes, I, at least I think, it's just going to make a really nice side that is going to be satisfying. You know, kind of, it's going to have that nice kind of salty, savory flavor. And... Yeah, just, just satisfying, because that is the thing, is finding food that when you're all done eating, you feel like you are satisfied. Okay, so I just tried the bacon fried cabbage. It's absolutely delicious. If, of course, you like bacon and cabbage. I'm just going to pick out the bacon. <laughs> you guys heard that, right? Okay, and now I'm working at the tilapia here. And I really wanted it to get more browned, but it's not really browning the way... Like, years ago, Warren would make perch and bluegills this way when we'd catch them. And we just always called it butterfish. Where I just we just melted butter and then fried them up real quick. But, um, yeah, I don't know, the tilapia just isn't really browning the way I thought it would. Okay, we're going to dish up now. The tilapia did not turn out <laughs> the way I thought it would. I did get some of it to crisp up, but it just broke up really, really, just a whole lot. So I think I'm going to have to stick to tilapia in the oven. Here is the, um, you know, the bacon fried cabbage. The kids are happily eating macaroni and cheese and fish sticks tonight. One more? Right? Mm, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Do you want what? macaroni and cheese? Uh, no. Do you want some tilapia? Yeah, I don't really know. Joe likes fish sticks, but I don't know what else he's going to eat. Are you going to try some of that tilapia fish? Who dropped some yes? fish sticks? Yes? Do you want some cabbage and bacon? What happened? Did someone drop fish sticks? Bacon. Yeah, it was laying right there. Oh, okay. And Peter was over here getting macaroni and cheese. So here we are the next day and I just wanted to show you guys how um, like the low carb eating kind of goes when I'm cooking for the whole family and they don't all want to eat that way. So here are the meatballs that I put together. Um, they're, you know, just almost gone. We just, just all served up. Then I did all of that cauliflower. So I roasted that at 425 degrees for 20 minutes. And then I did turn the temperature down to 400, roasted it for another 10 minutes and it gets it just kind of nice and golden brown and really nicely done. And here is how my plate is looking. So I do have a really large helping of the cauliflower. I use that as kind of my base and then my meatballs and then some cottage cheese. I did make for the rest of the family regular noodles and then we just had a tiny bit left of some whole wheat. So I made those up too so they would just be ready to go. Kids will have like buttered noodles for lunch tomorrow or something. And then I did, whoops, I'm caught on the tongs. <laughs> and then I did make some of this, uh, it's just frozen Texas toast from Aldi. So I made that. So that is how it looks when I'm cooking for kind of everybody. So I have some low carb food for myself and all the carbs for everyone else. We are home from church now and I just wanted to um, show you guys kind of what it looks like if I'm gonna put out some snacks. 
So again, just trying to keep everybody in mind and because when I start to go low carb, not everyone in the family wants to just see veggies and dip all the time. And so I put out a bowl of potato chips. Again, we have just the classic cashews. I said this the other day, but having nuts to crack on hand is a great um, thing to snack on because it like gives you something to do and you feel like you've eaten a lot because it takes a long time to crack nuts, but you really haven't. I have my uh, little containers that I made up of the veggies here and some dip and then also some candy that uh, came from grandma. So I just put all of this out. We're home from church and now I think everyone's probably just going to come up here and start munching away. Warren's actually making some... What is he making? A mimosa? Huh? No, it's just... Oh, it's just straight orange juice. He's going to make some cookies over here. The kids were begging for donuts and... Um, we decided to pass on the donuts, but he's going to make cookies. So that's kind of what it looks like for snacking after church. So it is supper time now, and we're having um, oven fried chicken. And I've showed this on my channel a lot before. And what I do is we just kind of shake this I'll into this. a mixture of like flour and paprika and salt and pepper. Well, anyway. So today for me, I just did everything the same with the butter and everything. I just didn't bread mine. Mine is the one that's kind of hiding over there. And then also, I'm serving. Oh, yeah. And then Amber and I are going to share a sweet potato here. I'll just put some butter and salt and pepper on that. We have cottage cheese, cranberry sauce, bread, potatoes. And then I made some coleslaw here as well. So... You can see how, you know, you can probably see the things that I'm going to take okay. and the things that other people are going to take. So, and this? that's kind of how we do it here when I'm trying to cook low carb for myself no. as well Mine. as have right. food for the family. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. So when I first started this video uh, a few days ago, I thought I'm just going to do sort of like a prep for getting back into eating low carb. So then that turned into sharing with you all kind of what my plate looks like and what the types of foods are that I'm eating. And now I guess I'm just going to share with you how things are going so far. So I have been um, back at eating a somewhat low carb um diet since it's been about I think today is like day nine or something like that I had a few slip-ups last week not where I was it wasn't the kind of slip-ups where I was like oh should I shouldn't I should I shouldn't I it wasn't that kind it was just like I completely forgot about it Emily had made some delicious delicious well she made some granola I didn't know it was delicious until Amber brought some home for us to try it was absolutely delicious and as soon as everyone ate what they wanted I put milk over it and just ate it as a great big bowl of cereal. So there we go, super high carb. It was so good though. <laughs> and then another day, there were like some crumbs in the bottom of a bag of kind of like, I think they call them like cheddar munchos or something like that. It's where you have the Doritos and the Cheetos and the um, cheddar pretzels and all those things all mixed together. Well, there was just some crumbs, probably I would say maybe a fourth of a cup of crumbs in the bottom and nobody, was eating up those crumbs and I was trying to clear the counter and so I just took the bag and I just lifted it up and poured it in my mouth as you would you know like you kind of slide them down so I'm not I wasn't really even thinking anything about it I just thought I want to clear the counter and there's some crumbs here so I'm gonna eat them and so I was like afterwards I was like oh shoot I was eating low carb and then I feel like I had one other slip up a day and I don't remember what it was anymore um I did get on the scale today and let's see last week when I finally remembered to step on the scale uh compared to this week so I'm down two pounds this morning uh, I found when I was eating low carb like that time before when it was like three years that if I just did um, once a week on the same day the same day of the week in the morning that seemed to work the best for um, weighing myself so today I just want to give you guys a peek into what we're gonna be having for supper I am putting together chili I mean chili is not an overly low carb but it's also not overly high carb depending on how you make it so I um, this is what I did. Here's all the containers. I had two jars of home canned tomato juice. I have two cans or jars here of the home canned kidney beans. Then I did two cans of tomato soup, chili powder, cumin, uh, beef bouillon cubes, ketchup. 
I did put in the meat, which is about a pound and a half or so of um, ground venison, and then I put in a small onion chopped as well. So I am gonna get this stirred, and then I'm just gonna put this on low for the afternoon and let this just simmer away all day. Uh, that'll be set for supper. And then I am going to, so this is how I will eat it, with sour cream, and I'm gonna shred up some cheese. But the rest of the family is going to want noodles in it. So what I will do, is I will just cook up a couple cups of elbow macaroni and once I take out uh, a serving for myself today and then I'll take out um, probably a serving for tomorrow as well and then I will just put the noodles in here for everybody else. So that is just kind of how I'm going to still enjoy chili um, without the noodles but as long as I have sour cream and cheese I'm good. So here it is Tuesday and um, I just wanted to show you guys a quick um, Cobb salad here. So this is just lettuce, tomato. I had some lunch meat turkey that I just kind of cut up real quick. A hard boiled egg, a half of an avocado is someplace underneath there. I put some bacon bits, just this kind of bacon bits here and a little cheese you can see, and then I am gonna add a little ranch to the top. So that is just another great way. If I want some crunch, I might actually throw on some uh, sunflower seeds as well. That's a great way to add crunch to a salad without using like the croutons. So that is what lunch is looking like here today. Hi, Joe. What are you doing with the salad? What are you doing with it? Just showing it to us? Okay. Okay, lettuce, mm-hmm. It's Wednesday morning now here, and um, yeah, we have lots and lots of sickness going on, so good thing I can't give that to you guys through the camera. But um, Warren and I are probably feeling the best out of everybody, so we're making up some breakfast here, and this is, it's great. I already had my zucchini prepped from the other day, I, you know, I um, just kind of like sliced up a whole zucchini. So I have that in about a teaspoon of olive oil. And I'm going to let that brown for a little bit. And then we do have some butter over here. Warren's going to get going on eggs as soon as my zucchini starts to kind of cook through a little bit. And then what I like to do is just kind of pull whatever I can find from the fridge. So I had a little bit of shredded cheese here from... I think maybe, oh, from making chili. I have a bag of bacon bits that I opened yesterday for um, the Cobb salad. And so I'm just going to, at the very end, I'll throw some bacon bits on, top it with a little cheese and that. Oh, and you know, I'll have an egg, probably an egg and a half this morning. And that's gonna be breakfast here. I know <clears throat> when I first started, oh boy. <laughs> When I first started um, eating low carb, the idea of having a lot of vegetables for breakfast seemed kind of foreign, but um, I, what I started with was doing a lot of omelets because that just seemed more normal to have like uh, green pepper and onion and things in an omelet. And then I gradually just got to where I can um, saute up whatever kind of vegetables. So a lot of times what I like to do too is make extras of whatever roasted vegetable I'm going to be having for supper like cauliflower or broccoli or cabbage and then just adding that to my breakfast. So put a little Parmesan cheese over top of that like fresh shredded Parmesan cheese. It tastes excellent for breakfast. It makes a great addition um, to a low carb breakfast. So that's what we're doing. Warren's also making up some um, grapefruit. grapefruit. I couldn't remember for a second. And uh, so he's making up some grapefruit here. So I think, are you gonna eat both halves? Uh -huh. Yep, so he's eating both halves Unless this somebody wants one. Yeah, but everybody is sick. The grapefruit eaters are sick in the house. So that's what's going down. I'm getting ready for lunch here and I'm just starting um, my low carb lunch before I start uh, making lunch for everybody else because I want to get this kind of out of the way. Anyway, here's what I'm going to do. I've never done this before, but I'm going to make this kind of like cauliflower mac and cheese. Basically, this is a whole head of cauliflower that I have kind of chopped up in. Um, I started with my food processor and it actually wasn't working real well. So then I just kind of chopped it with a knife. I have some salted boiling water here. I'm gonna get that all into there. I'm gonna 
bring that back to a simmer here and let it cook for about four minutes. I'll drain off the water and then in that same pan I'm going to uh, melt, this is four ounces of cream cheese, one third cup of heavy cream, and then I have some spices here. This is a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, and about an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper. I'm just going to melt all of this together, get it real creamy. I'm going to put the, I'm going to put shredded cheese into here. I have to shred that yet. Then I'll put the cauliflower back in and that's what we're going to do. I'll probably top it with a little bit of bacon and that will be my lunch. I've never done it. I'll let you know how it turns out. Alright, so this is what it looks like at this point here. I would consider this done, except once I serve it, I am going to put some uh, little bacon bits on it. Now, I was thinking that I was going to have to add a little more heavy cream because it, the sauce uh, seemed kind of thick after I put the cheese in, like it wasn't going to spread. But as soon as I put the cauliflower in, and you know, I didn't press the moisture out of that at all, I just let it drain on its own until you know, the whole time I was doing this part. Um, and then once I added it, it got nice and um, you know, kind of like juicy and seems more like macaroni and cheese. It actually, to me, seems a little bit more like like uh, cheesy potatoes or something. So, all right, that's gonna be supper, or sorry, lunch, get that turned off. Now I'm gonna make some grilled cheese for the rest of the family who's not sick. <laughs> So I'm just popping back in here to let you guys know that this um, like keto version <clears throat> of macaroni and cheese is absolutely delicious. It's basically just like cheesy cauliflower, but it is super good. It's very, very satisfying because that's sometimes the key is to make sure that the food has the right flavor and the right consistency to actually feel satisfying. So when you're done, you're not like, oh, I kind of want a cookie now. <laughs> but um, Amber just had some too, and she hollered and she's like, mom, that is delicious. So just wanted to let you know that I will um, post this recipe in the description box below. You guys recognize the music? <laughs> the kids have discovered Flintstones, and that's been kind of fun. Um, okay, so here we are. It is Wednesday. Um, evening and it is supper time so what I have down or so what's going down here tonight is we're gonna have three things we're gonna have venison steak and I'm going to make some broccoli salad and then we're also gonna do instant mashed potatoes so I will be having the venison steak and the uh, broccoli salad and then obviously um, other people in the family are gonna have instant mashed potatoes so I did get I kind of have like my three stations set up here. I have my cast iron pan. I do have to get out my bacon grease to put over here. Then over here, I'm going to be putting together my broccoli salad. And I am going to attempt to make it without any sugar in the dressing. The sugar or the dressing does call for a half cup of sugar. I've already lowered that uh, to between a quarter and a third um, whenever I do make it. And today I'm actually, instead of using mayo, I'm going to use Miracle Whip. And over here I have set up my little station for making the instant mashed potatoes. So I think I'm going to get the salad going first, then pop over here, and then hop back over um, to the steaks and do the steaks last. I am going to get this um, getting hot though. I'm going to put it onto number two. No, we'll just go low. Get that going nice and get it hot. Okay, so I have this all done and uh, I totally left out the sugar and I'm just using the sweetness from... Um, from the sweet and dried cranberries, which, you know, they do have plenty of sugar in them, but um, I actually tasted it and it tastes really, really good, so I'm happy that I uh, went that route. And then I also have um, the venison steak frying over here. I use bacon grease. I know I've shared this before, but whenever we have bacon, I like to save the bacon grease because I figure I might as well use what we already have rather than going out and buying some other kind of fat, like lard or Crisco or something like that. And just a tip, if you are making like steaks or any kind of meat in cast iron, once the steak is done enough on one side, it'll actually naturally release from the pan. And you can see that the steaks got really brown on one side, and then they naturally released and they didn't stick to the bottom of the pan. So just a tip if you're having a hard time, you know, turning meat or whatever in a cast iron pan. 
got all ready for this, didn't you? <laughs> Cleaned up, yep. <laughs> it's a pretty sad story around here tonight. We've got sick kids over there. That blanket on the floor, that's a sick child. Blanket, sick child, sick child. <laughs> so we set the table, but yep, we couldn't entice anybody that wanted to come Everyone's to eat. Everyone's feeling pretty low. They are feeling pretty bad. Yeah. But Warren's eating. What do you think? How's the steak? You did a great job. It's beautiful. Nice and tender. And this is my plate here. So that's going to be it for Wednesday supper. I'm back and it is Thursday evening. It's 4.30 and it is time to get some supper going here. I still have lots and lots of sick people in this household. So far, the only two people that haven't gotten sick is Amber and myself. We are still crossing our fingers, hoping that we don't end up with this because it's been pretty bad. It's just super high fever, completely washed out, achy all over. Um, there's been a little bit of throwing up, but... Um, that was only, really, oh, that was only Peter. Um, everybody else just aching, aching, and high fever and sleeping. Oh my gosh, the house has been so quiet the last few days. Um, okay, so for tonight's supper, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making chicken Alfredo. Now, again, I'm just kind of showing you how I do this so that there's something that's satisfying for me to eat as well as... Um, you know, something that everybody else wants to eat as well. So I kind of have my station set up here. Right here I have water um, almost boiling, and that's going to be for the pasta. I have, <clears throat> excuse me, I have the bow tie pasta for tonight. I don't know really who all is even going to be wanting to eat. We've been, everybody's been eating super, super light, but I know that Warren and I are still going to want a good meal here tonight. I do have my cast iron out here with a little dollop of bacon grease in, and I just prepped my uh, chicken tenders here. So I cut off like those little tendon things that kind of come at the end of each one. And then over here, I have some spices. So I have uh, a lot of black pepper, that's fresh ground black pepper, salt, garlic powder, and paprika. There's probably about a teaspoon of each of those, maybe not quite. Yeah, there's probably a teaspoon of pepper in there too. So now what I'm going to do is just swirl these all together and then I'll just coat both sides of the chicken tenderloins with that. As soon as I put the pasta in, I'm going to turn on my pan, start letting that get really, really hot so that the pan, because this takes a long time for this enormous uh, cast iron pan to heat up properly so that I end up with, um, you know, like seared meat and not just steamy meat. Okay, over here... I have a little station set up. This is everything I'm going to need to make the sauce. So I'm going to need two cups. I have about a cup here, and then I have a new one of the heavy, heavy whipping cream, a whole thing of Parmesan cheese. It calls for a five ounce block, freshly grated. I didn't have that, I, but I did happen to have a five ounce container of shredded Parmesan cheese. I'll use that. It calls for some fresh ground pepper calls for a couple teaspoons of minced garlic, a stick of butter, and then fresh basil. Again, I don't have fresh basil leaves right now, but I do have some dried, so I'll use um, probably, I don't know, about a half of a teaspoon or something like that, a teaspoon of basil leaves in here. Now over here, I just have a bowl waiting for um, the broccoli florets. These are the kind that you just steam in the bag. I think I have to put them in for five and a half minutes. No, four to five what does it say here? Four to five minutes, this side up. So I always go for uh, 4.30 and then I'll just pour those into here and I will eat my chicken Alfredo uh, right over top of the broccoli. That tastes really, really good that way. You could also do asparagus if you like that. All right, I have everything ready to go for supper and this is what I ended up doing. I took out, well, I'll show you this first. So I have the pasta in here with the Alfredo sauce. I put the chicken down one half. I put the broccoli down the other half. This is what, um, you know, this is just kind of like what chicken Alfredo would look like <laughs> when I serve it up. But this here is going to be what I'm going to be eating. Sorry about those shadows there. I left a little bit of sauce here. I put some chicken in here and the rest of the broccoli, and I just kind of stirred it around, and I will just serve that up for myself. The sides that we're going to serve tonight is going to be cottage cheese, some cranberry sauce, and then applesauce. I just have to run down to the basement and grab that. But that is going to be supper here on this Thursday night. And I did taste this um, Alfredo sauce already. 
And I have to say, I've always made the Pioneer Woman Chicken Alfredo, and this is far superior. I did actually get this recipe. Hi, Joe. What? Okay. <laughs> I did actually get this recipe uh, from Mandy in the Making at her channel, and she just had it like written out in her description box below. So I just followed it just the way, basically just the way that she did it. I didn't change it up any uh, anyway. I, I guess I added the broccoli. But um, yeah, so really, really like this. And actually, I mean, I hate to say it because I do love a lot of the Pioneer Woman recipes, but I do like this better than um, that one. So that is going to wrap up this look into how I feed my family and how I eat when I'm doing low carb. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up and I'd love to have you along as a subscriber. I'm going to be doing more of these low carb meals um, and low carb style cooking videos in the future here. So please um, be on the lookout for those. And as always, if you do want to leave any kind of comment, you will have to head over to the community tab. You just kind of go up by where it says... Uh, home videos about something community is one of the tabs and you have to go over there and leave a comment because I still do not have comments So I hope that you guys have a fantastic evening. Bye-bye